What's up guys? Working on the Porsche. You're welcome. Uh, thank you everybody who commented on the last video and was like, hey, make some more videos for the Porsche because we love the Porsche. Look at it. Look at it right there. It's so cute. Anyways, I'm making more stuff. Uh, here you go. This guy. I'll just walk you over. Uh, currently, I'm making a front strut bar. Goes like that. And then going to make a bar goes across. Then maybe some sort of X system. Make it super cool and gangster-like. And then I got my new Hypertherm PowerMax 65 today for the new plasma table. So that'll be running real soon. Just waiting on all the electronics there somewhere. Who knows? But, um, so I made these plates, uh, eighth inch thick. Uh, that hole is nine sixteenths. These two holes are to make it look cool. Um, big bolt that I found in my bolt drawer. It's an M14. And then some of these salvaged off of some, uh, eBay adjustable control arms. Uh, usually I buy the eBay ones and then switch these out with some nice, and then it's basically a nice control arm. And then these work great for strut tower braces because it doesn't matter if they move or not, or, you know, wear down because they don't move. That's what I mean. Um, so I got a bunch of these. I'm gonna use those for that. And I got a bunch more. Like a lot more. So I can make some cool stuff with those. But for now, oh, and then, yeah, I just welded that one so it's still hot. This part is actually the factory strut top guy. I don't know what it's called, um, but he's a factory piece. And then I just did some ugly little TIG welds. Getting better, still ugly. Um, and there's that. So I'm gonna weld the other one up real quick and then, uh, we're gonna work on the other parts. So to get this width I needed and to have them parallel, I put uh, this little one inch chunk of pieces, chunk of aluminum, yep. And this little eighth inch piece of uh, flat stock. And just put that in between there, clamped it down, tightened the bolt, made sure it was all nice and straight. That's not super critical, but that's a little tip that might help you. Helps get those nice and parallel. And then the, the shape of these are pretty much just all done by hand. Um, just trace it out, rough cut it with that guy, finish it down with this guy, and it makes a nice, nice little shape. Nice shapes make everything happy. So now I need to fill this little gap over right here. Uh, for that, I'm going to use my lovely lathe and some Delrin. So, Delrin, I already drilled a uh, 9 16th hole down the middle, so now I just need to cut two little pieces. Uh, they'll be about, they'll be about yay big, uh, 0.2 inches, I believe. 200 thousandths, if you want to be a machinist about it. Um, so I'm going to smooth out that face, and then I'm going to cut it and do that again. I just spent like 30 minutes walking around my shop looking for this bolt day in the life of Matt. Corey has something to say. <laughs> I don't even know if I can say it. Say it. I won't put it in. I won't put it in if... You are going to put it in. Um, I can't wire a radio. Fun fact. Corey's colorblind. I'm colorblind. Um, so gray and white look the fucking same. And orange and red look the same. So this is my third try now, trying to wire a Pioneer radio into my Jeep, because I'm colorblind. Good, good job. And I have Tourette's. Fuck me, right? So this is the bar I'm using. It is a uh, one inch by 065 tubing. Um, need to buy some nuts to weld onto the end and then some jam nuts for each side. But basically sit like that. Um, and then I'm probably going to go from like here over to there and same thing, boom to boom. 
and that should stiffen up the front of this thing really well. So in the middle of me doing, you know, everything at once and my mind can't keep a straight track, I welded these on. Boom and boom. Um, I did a pretty weld there. Look at that. Look at that guy. I like him. He's a good guy. Friend. Um, so these are 20-20 AN fittings and they are going to go towards the front radiator. Um, basically, I'll have a short, a short flexible pipe. This one will go down that side and that one will go down that side up towards the front. Um, a little short flex section then to some aluminum hard pipes and then to more flex section before we get to the radiator. And this one, I'm gonna weld there and probably just cut it across and boop, maybe. And then that one, the plan currently is to weld it right to that spot because I don't have enough room. I don't have enough room down there. So I'm gonna weld it to there, come off and then up and back, I think. Even though the, technically the hoses will be backwards, but I don't think that's a big deal. Um, and then I'm also going to have what's called an external bypass thermostat. And I don't know if that'll be up here, back here or up there. Um, but what it does is it allows the coolant to flow in the system rather than just if we had the thermostat here it would kind of just block off the flow and it would you know cause hot spots in the engine and whatnot so by allowing it to flow you allow the engine to stay evenly the temperature to stay even and it's better some old dude in an air, an ex-air-cooled Subaru-powered Volkswagen van told me that. Shouts out that guy. Now back to the original plan. Uh, making the front strut bars. I got these guys that are a little bit smaller than the other ones. These are going to bolt. Let me show you. This is gonna bolt right right there. It actually fits. It fits better on that side than it does on this side, so I'm gonna need to do some trimming first. But yeah, I'm gonna bolt there and there and just do a little, little X. Nyeh, 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 nyeh. Um, and I think that'll just look cool. Minimal brace. It might do some bracing, I don't know. But it'll look cool. That's the important part. So with these ends finished up all nicely, we can like, Looking like that, not too shabby. Half, half ass TIG weld on there. Um, I whipped up some end pieces. Uh, these I used nuts just because of the size of it. This, because the threads were too small, the nuts were like fitting inside the tube. So I just made my own nuts basically, except they're like that long. So they're extra strong. Um, so I got one of those over there. I'll have one over there. But right now I am fitting up this tube. So I just need to make the notch a little bigger right there. And I don't know how I'm gonna weld it. I need to TIG weld it to make it look pretty. But I might MIG, I might MIG it in like a couple spots to bring it over there so I can weld it. And then just grind down the MIGs and then TIG over it. You know, we'll see. Here's the radiator. Uh, I think I've said this a couple times before, but this is from a Volkswagen GTI. Uh, just a totally random Mishimoto that I found that is dual pass. So the coolant comes in and goes whoop, whoop, boom. Um, so I'm gonna be cutting this guy off right there where I've already started cutting. And then I'm cutting this guy off um, all the way. Maybe, maybe right under this flange, just to give me a nice spot to weld on. And then this guy's getting welded there, and this guy's getting welded, you know, in place of this. So this fella is all welded up. Deleted that guy, put that guy there, this guy here. And I'm gonna bolt this back in the car, and then I'm gonna go to bed because it's like three or four in the morning now. And that's wrap for the night.
I am super happy with this and those. And I'm super happy with my aluminum welds. Shouts out me, honestly. Um, so those two guys, I think, yeah, see, I'm planning on, I was already planning on cutting some of the body over there um, and then just come off there at like a 45. Um, and then, yeah, I might put it like a little surge tank or like a little uh, over expansion tank, something up here to help bleed air out of the system. Um, or I might just put one at the rear. Maybe I'll put two front and rear. I don't know. We'll see. Or I could maybe just put a little filler, filler port, bleeder port right here. It's not a bad idea. Now with this all together, I'm going to move on to the back. And the plan is, well, the plan originally was I was going to go off of the uh, throttle bodies and sort of branch this way and kind of come into there. Um, but a couple problems. It's a really tight bend back here. Um, and I want to boost it eventually. So I don't want intercooler piping to be like over here, over here, up there, back. That would just be stupid. Um, so the plan is to put the intercoolers right there. I think I've said it before, but intercooler there, intercooler there. Um, I'll have plenty of room because this will be up here. So I got room um, and then some intakes, some intakes right there. Maybe window intakes later, I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna cut right here. Uh, let the pipes run through and then just put some, uh, some air filters or little make air boxes maybe down here for now until I go turbo and make bad decisions and ruin my life. So here it is, I just uh, hole sawed it. I think that's like a three and a half inch hole saw maybe. Um, and now I'm just gonna cut that, cut the death spike off. Um, and then I'll be making an aluminum plate and welding the elbows to the aluminum plate. Um, from the throttle bodies to the aluminum tubes, I got some, uh, that's two and three quarter, and then I'm gonna do three, three inch. So then I got some two and a quarter to three inch uh, hump. The guys that allow a little bit of flex. So that'll be fine, you know, flex between the motor and the body, no biggie. And then, I'm not sure, I'll probably do the same thing down here, another plate that bolts in. So basically I could remove this whole tube setup if I want to and change it or do whatever. This right here is what the, uh, the little air inlet hole looks like. Um, those are the hump fittings that I was talking about. I got those in and got those put on. Um, I had to shave down a little bit in the middle to get, be able to get them onto the dual throttle bodies. And then the plate is going to wait until I finish the plasma table just because it'll It'll give me something to do and it'll simplify making that plate. So that'll happen in time. So now I pulled the fuel rails off, uh, pulled all the injectors out. And basically what I'm going to do is cut the ends off, which this is where the, uh, basically the adapter, the crossover and the fuel line and the uh, fuel pressure regulator all bolt to. Something like that. Um, I'm going to take these dash six AN fittings and TIG weld them to the ends. Basically, instead of the plate, it'll just be AN fitting. And then those can go to the fuel pressure regulator, the crossover lines, and the feed. Uh, I'm not totally sure how I'm going to organize the fuel lines, but I'll figure that out when I get to it. And here's the finished product right there, if it'll focus. Meep. There you go. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, I'm gonna toss these back in and that'll probably be it for this video. So let's see what they look like. So I bolted it up, uh, just kind of mocked up a uh, AN line that I had and I think it looks pretty dope. Um, the rear, it's really dark in here, um, but the rear is just gonna come out 
And then I'm not sure where I'm gonna route the lines underneath the car and stuff. I don't even know where they are from the factory. Um, but I'm going to go from this, this side. Um, I, I'm not sure, there's two different options I could do. Is basically go in this side, out, cross over, through, boom, boom. Or I could go, oh, losing focus here. Um, I could go from the front to a Y to both sides and then out to a Y to the return. So I'm not sure. And that is all for now uh, on the Porsche. I'm going to be doing some work on the cart. I'm gonna, I'll make a video for you guys. I haven't done a cart update in a while. Tell you what I've done. I will show you what I'm doing. Uh, do a couple more things. I'm really trying to get that ready to drift soon before the start of the season. Before the start of the season when I can drive that thing because it doesn't drive nicely when it's cold because, you know, I'm cold and I get cold very easily. Uh, and then the Honda, I might make some videos once I'm doing some cooler stuff to the Honda, but I've only done a five street swap and minor repair work to it. So that's not very cool. But be sure to like this video, subscribe and stick around for more Porsche updates, cart updates, uh, LS Ford Ranger updates, because I haven't even started a video on that because I barely started and my forklift's down and there's an engine stuck in the back of my truck because this forklift has been down for like a week or two and they loaded the engine with a forklift and I have a Suburban so I can't get it out with the engine hoist and now I'm just blabbering, bye.